Do you ask for signs from God? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. The most trustworthy signs come unexpectedly and without the asking, and they can strike a thousand different chords in our hearts, from delightful, sweet, and serendipitous, to odd, disturbing, and even horrifying. In the following excerpt from the book, Full of Grace, Miraculous Stories of Healing, a man named Jaime Jaramillo, who became a Nobel Peace Prize nominee, received his life's calling through a tragic occurrence. As I walked along, a Fisher Price toy box decorated with a picture of a doll suddenly fell onto the road from a passing car. A group of street children noticed it and immediately ran into the street. A little girl reached it first and with a look of triumphant glee, she lifted up the box above her head. Her eyes met mine and the expression on her face said clearly, Look what I found. Happy and radiant, she continued to stare directly at me, smiling broadly, and I smiled back. Neither of us aware that a large truck was advancing toward her at an alarming speed. The truck driver slammed on the brakes, but it was already too late. The right side of his trailer crushed her against the pavement. Seized with sorrow, I stepped toward that heart-wrenching scene. Next to her dead body lay the toy box. It was empty. That empty Fisher Price toy box was a divine sign for me. In that moment, I began to understand my mission in this world. With all the grief, resentment, and anger that I felt, I went to a shopping center and purchased a Santa Claus costume. Then after lifting a sack of a hundred cheap presents onto my back, I walked out into the streets as Saint Nick to distribute the gifts to the children of the streets. Thus was born on that Christmas in 1973, La Fundación Niños de los Andes, Foundation for the Children of the Andes, a foundation I still help run that rescues races and rehabilitates street children. In today's Gospel reading, the Pharisees demand for a heavenly sign that would prove that everything Jesus was doing and preaching had the blessings of God. Jesus refused to give them a sign on their terms. For what more evidence should Jesus produce? In the preceding passages, he had just fed 4,000 with seven loaves and a few fish. He had cast out a demon, healed a paralyzed man, cured a man with a withered hand, calmed the storm, raised a little girl from the dead, fed 5,000 men with five loaves and two fish, and made a deaf and mute man hear and talk again. For sure, the Pharisees either witnessed these or heard about these miracles that Jesus did. We all look for signs from heaven when we are in a bind with a problem, when we need to make a decision. We hope that the Lord will show us the way and this is not altogether wrong, but this can be very tricky, for the devil can be so cunning that we can be deceived fully. Christine Watkins, founder of QueenofPeaceMedia.com writes, One of my clients, when in her wayward twenties, decided to go out for a night on the town in Berkeley, something she almost never did. When she walked upstairs to the second floor of a restaurant bar, which squeezed about 10 people between its walls, a young man from France was standing right in front of her. She'd had a fling with him for a few weeks in Paris, the summer before, and he didn't just travel across the world to Berkeley to see her, neither did he know where she lived. Of all the possible places around the globe, he ended up at that exact location on that particular night at that particular time. I don't know what the odds are of that happening, but I guess it is around one in a trillion or more. This young man, an atheist, and she a new ager at that time, could not escape the statistical rarity of this near-impossible sign, and its unspoken message was too hard to ignore. They were supposed to hook up. So that night, under the guise of it was meant to be, the devil enjoyed staining their souls with yet another serious sin. We often seek some confirmation that what we want to do is the right thing to do, we can be blinded by our own feelings, influenced by the deceitful darts of the devil. For our own past experiences and biases can easily justify our decisions. But if there is an iota of doubt, of emotions that point to favoritism, hatred, or revenge, then such do not come from God. What is our heart telling us really when we are confronted with a situation? When there is some uneasiness, discomfort, doubt brought about by a potential response on our part, that will violate the values and commandments that Jesus taught us, surely 
Signs, whatever they are, are not from God. But one sure sign we must not ignore that God approves of our decision and action is when our heart is at peace, pure, grateful, desirous of obeying God's commandments, fully submitted to loving the people who are difficult to love, courageous to put forth truth yet unblemished by anger or vindictiveness or fear, when we have sought God's forgiveness in the confessional, when we have sought the Holy Spirit's hand in our decision, when we have prayed not just for a sign, but more importantly, for a discerning heart, a heart that is open to the Holy Spirit's promptings, no matter which way it goes, when in faith we follow even if it is not our preference, but align to God's commandments, these are real signs of God's hand moving us to the right direction in our life. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, give me a discerning heart that knows your will for me and my life, one that is filled with love for your people. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.